Good afternoon, Patuxent High School. I'm Mr. Sloan with a couple reminders. First of all, Key Club is working on details for the third annual Friendship Dance Game Night. Just in case you're not familiar with it, this is a special needs dance for students of Patuxent High School and community members from all of Southern Maryland. If you're interested in joining us for the planning of this event, please contact Ms. Morrissey and she will email you a team's invite. Group meets Tuesdays during a lunch. If you have any questions, please contact Miss Morrissey. And just a reminder from the yearbook staff of Patuxent High School, we want to reassure all of you that we are currently working on putting together a wonderful 2020-21 Patuxent High School yearbook. I've received a few questions more recently about underclassmen pictures. Folks, we are working on getting approval from the Board of Education so that you can submit your grade portrait to us virtually. Look for more ed information to come through your English teachers. Once we get approval from the Board of Ed, we will disseminate that information as quickly as possible. Also, if you wouldn't mind sending us photos, use the hashtag here, hello, or email them to me. That's right, Mr. Sloan, that's sloanj at calvertnet.k12.md.us, and we will do everything we can to make this yearbook the best it can possibly be under our current circumstances. That's all from the Bunker on Bean. Everybody have a great afternoon. It's been a week. Now, let's get on with the Variety Show! What they call the abyss I'm falling claw for an inch Turning a miracle mile I could recall when your lips Used to contort in the slimes Bright as the sun was drawn in the clips I haven't seen light in a while Hasn't been bright in a while Chris. Coronavirus, natural disasters, a nation divided through politics, and more. 2020 was a bad year for everyone, and it was made all the more worse due to the celebrities that we lost. We lost actors whose movies we enjoyed, musicians whose music meant something to us, social and political figures we looked up to and admired, athletes who inspired us, and more. This segment is to commemorate those who we lost in 2020.
We lost numerous icons in 2020, but their contributions to their fields will not soon be forgotten. They will be remembered for generations to come. Allergies. They suck. A lot. My body is dumb, so I have them myself, and it's no fun at all. When I was born, I was allergic to dogs, cats, pollen, grass, mold, dust, peanuts, tree nuts, soy, fish, shellfish, peas, eggs, and sesame. Luckily, I've grown out of a majority of these. And you guys might think it's weird that I can't eat food. But for me, it's kind of weird that you guys can just find any piece of food on the floor, pop it in your mouth, and have nothing to worry about. So, I want to clear up the confusion and explain what allergies are and why they occur. An allergy occurs when your body's natural defenses or your immune system overreacts to exposure to a particular substance, treating it as an invader and trying to defend against it. So, when I say that my body is dumb for being allergic to things, it's quite literally dumb for mistaking food for something harmful. More than 50 million Americans have an allergy of some kind, whether it's the pollen, dogs, or peanuts. That's about 16% of the population, which is a pretty solid amount. A lot of people will mistakenly think that there are two kinds of allergies. One to things like pets, pollen, dust, and mold, and the other to the foods like peanuts, shellfish, and eggs. Which is wrong. Whether it's to dust or to crab, your body reacts the same way for either substance. So, if you're allergic to pollen, you're no cooler than me. You can be allergic to anything. The most common allergies are eggs, milk, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, wheat, and soy. But there are rare allergies too. Things like money, sunlight, and even water can all cause allergic reactions. Another common misconception is that no, allergies are not permanent. You can grow out of allergies at any time, but as a child, you are much more likely to grow out of them rather than as an adult. Out of everything that I was allergic to when I was younger, I'm now only allergic to peanuts, shellfish, dogs, and pollen. But this also works in the opposite way. You, yes you, could develop an allergy any day of the week. You may not be allergic to it now, but one day your body may decide it just doesn't like peanuts anymore. And boom, no more Reese's for you. Which would suck, but at least you know what they taste like unlike someone who's been allergic to them for their whole life. I hope you've learned a lot about allergies and why they occur. If you haven't, then I hope you develop an allergy. If you did, then thank you. But if you take anything away from this, please remember this. Allergies are not a joke. Don't go feeding your allergic friend a peanut because allergies can be seriously life-threatening and can cause major health issues. So please, be smart about allergies because who knows, one day you could wake up and not be able to drink water. Drew Brees is hands down one of the best quarterbacks in history. He was drafted back in 2001 by the San Diego Chargers, where he then played with them all the way up to 2005, where he then got traded to the Saints in 2006. He now currently plays for the Saints to this day, where he will retire as one of the best quarterbacks in Saints history. During his time with the Saints, he broke seven different NFL records. But on top of those seven records, he also won 10 SBs, eight NFL honors, and one Super Bowl MVP. Drew Brees will always be the best quarterback in Saints history, and he had an amazing 20 careers in the NFL that no one will forget. But not only was he amazing on the football field, he was amazing in the community. Back when he was with the Chargers, he donated basically almost $5 million to the Hurricane Katrina Relief Fund to the state of Louisiana before he came to the Saints. This year with the coronavirus pandemic, he donated another $5 million to the Coronavirus Relief Fund to Louisiana as well. One of the best things that Drew Brees has done for his community is what he did for a junior quarterback by the name of Alex Ruiz when he severely injured his knee. Alex had injured his knee so severely that it led to amputation and he would 
think that he would never be able to play football again. But partnering up with Football Nation of America, Drew Brees, he would give him his athletic training leg, which for Alex, that meant that he could play football once again and live his dream. Fire up those Disney Plus accounts because there's finally something new to watch other than The Mandalorian. After a long hiatus due to finishing up the Infinity Saga and Endgame bringing closure to a lot of the major storylines, the MCU hasn't put out any new content since June of 2019. But that has changed. The first two episodes of WandaVision are now available. The first TV series since Netflix's Defenders to be a part of the MCU, WandaVision seems to be taking a different approach than previous shows. Instead of introducing us to new characters that have nothing to do with the main storyline, they're taking characters from the movies who haven't had much time in the spotlight and giving them a way to be fleshed out and to continue the MCU. From the looks of it, Marvel seems to be trying to do the same with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as well as Loki. As for WandaVision specifically, the first two episodes have been... unusual. It's clear that there's a lot we don't know from the first two episodes. For example, where are they? Why is it the 50s? Why can't they remember anything? Why are Wanda's powers different? And what happened to her accent? And there are many more questions just like those. And I'm sure that most, if not all, of these questions will be answered as the show goes on. Otherwise, the show runs like a normal, gimmicky Disney sitcom. The gimmick this time is that Wanda is magic and Vision is a robot, but there are also some very creepy vibes hidden in the background. Personally, I think this story will be taking inspiration from the House of M comics. I won't go into detail, but there are some similarities between the circumstances of House of M and WandaVision, the main one being that Vision just died. If you'll remember, Vision died in Infinity War, and unlike most characters who died in that movie, he didn't get to come back in Endgame. So if you would like a possible hint behind some of the mysteries in WandaVision, I suggest you give it a read. WandaVision is now streaming on Disney+, Plus, with the first two episodes currently out and seven more coming over the next couple weeks, airing every Friday. Hey guys, it's Babyface Say, and if you're anything like me, you're tired of listening to the same music. The songs, they're good, but we need something to spice up your playlist. Lucky for you, I am here. So let's get straight into it. But before we start, Sloan said that I had to be a little more professional than shirt and gray sweatpants. So Jeez. I look like I could pull up on you, mama. She called me a nice young man. Hold on, let me. God, hold on, let me. Woo, hold on, hold on, let me. Hold on, let me. Oh. <laughs> This first segment is what I like to call my white girl tunes. The music I wouldn't really play around the guys. The first song that I'm about to show you is called Forever by Claro and it has a nice summer vibe. This next segment is what I like to call hype. It might cause a little controversy, but hey, I don't care. First things first, we have Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. You've probably heard it before in the football locker room. It's a nice song. Always gets me turned. And then we have a good song called Russian Cream by Key Glock. Makes me feel like the bad is around. You can't tell me nothing while this song is playing. You can't forget about Pop Smoke. The Woo is never dead. <laughs> Next segment, we have love songs like Come Through and Chill by Miguel and J. Cole, Get With You by Claro, We Fell in Love in October by Girl in Red, Lover is a Day by Kuko, Martin and Gina by Polo G, and Fallen For You.
pain. Yeah, but they don't know if I need it. I feel like that every season. I've been swimming in the deep end. Yeah, I'm not sure. What are you still doing here? Scram, let's get out, get out of here. There's, real, there's nothing left for you. Why are you just looking at me? Oh, you ain't seen me doing TikTok dance. I got you. Ooh, bust it. Bust it. Bust it. Bust it. In 4K. In 4, really? In 4K? I caught you. I caught you. Go read them. And here are three spots for a short vacation. The key to Washington's family appeal is the National Mall, which features loads of free attractions, re-owned monuments, and kid-friendly museums, including the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum and the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. Beyond the mall, a stop at the Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conversation Biology Institute is also a must. The zoo is home to approximately 2,700 animals. It's easy for New York City to be considered more of an adult playground with all of its nightlife and entertainment options. But there's plenty for kids to enjoy here, too. Central Park is the perfect place for children to run around, featuring 21 playgrounds, the famous low bow house and seasonal amenities like an ice skating rink and an amusement park. The American Museum of Natural History will excite curious minds, while little ones will no doubt love seeing the Bronx Zoo's animal. Myrtle Beach is as close as to perfect family vacation as you can get. Not only does this South Carolina town offer claim shores perfect for kids, but it also features for fun attractions, including Ripley's Aquarium of Myrtle Beach, Family Kingdom Amusement Park, Broadway Grand Picks, and numerous mini golf courses. Keep in mind that because of Myrtle Beach popularity with families, the summer is extremely crowded so you may want to reserve your recommendations several months in advance or consider a late spring or early fall trip for some excellent weather and activities but with fewer people.